All right, today we're doing quartiles, into quartile range, and outliers. Or we're giving a more uh, numerical description of what makes a number and outlier. So imagine a data set in this bar. I'm not going to show you the numbers, but just imagine a bunch of numbers that we'll represent with this bar. Uh, we know the median is the middle. So that would be uh, where the median is. The point of a median is it splits the data into two roughly equal halves. So you expect 50% of the data to lie on one side and 50% to lie on the other side of the median. Now what quartiles are is if we do this again to each of those halves, so we split them each in half again. The lower quartile would be here and the upper quartile would be here. Now we call the lower quartile Q1 and the upper quartile Q3. Well, Q2 is missing because that's just the median, right? Because two quarters is a half, right? So the point of these quartiles is they split the data into four equal groups, just like how the median splits you in half, the quartiles split you into quarters. Now what this also gives us is a new measure of spread because so far we've only seen the range and the range only looks at the biggest number and the smallest number. So the range is very vulnerable to outliers, very extreme values. All right. But what we can do is instead of using the range, which is quite crude and quite vulnerable to that, we can measure the difference between these two quartiles and we call this the interquartile range. So that's a better measure of spread, maybe. Um, it's maybe less susceptible to those outliers. So we might sometimes ask for this one now, this difference between the upper and lower quartile. Okay. All right, so let's see this with some numbers. Um, we'll start with this. Now, the median here, I hope we can know by now, would be the middle number there, which is the 8. And because the median is exactly one number on this set, uh, we split our data then into these two halves there. So we sort of throw out the median. If it's, if it's a number in the set, we just ignore it for the rest of this. Um, we have the left half and the right half. On the left half, the median of those numbers is just 2. So Q1, the lower quartile, is 2. On the right half, the median is 11. So Q3, the upper quartile, is 11. And the difference between them gives the interquartile range, which is going to be 11 minus 2, which is 9. Okay. We'll try the same thing again, maybe with another set of numbers, maybe a bigger set this time. Now, the first thing we do, just like in finding median, the first thing we should do is sort those numbers into order. So let's do that now. And the median this time, you see, because there are 12 numbers, that splits us into 6 and 6. So the median is actually halfway between those two numbers, which is 7.5. And the median this time isn't actually a number in the set. So it actually makes things a bit, maybe a bit cleaner even, because we do get this uh, equal split um, across the left half and the right half. And the median's not part of that, but that's okay. So on the left half, we have those six numbers there. The median of that is the first quartile, which is now going to be 2.5. And on the right, we do the same thing. We get the median of that, which is 11. So our lower quartile is 2.5. Our upper quartile is 11. The difference between them is the interquartile range. That's 11 minus 2.5, which is 8.5. Okay, I think we've mentioned outliers before, but what we want to ask is, well, outliers are numbers which are either too big or too small. But when is a number too big or too small? And it's not an easy thing to answer, and actually there's probably more than one way to answer this, but how we're going to do it is like this. We're going to grab ourselves a number line and once again imagine our data sits inside this little bubble here okay uh, what we're going to do is work out our lower quartile and upper quartile which we'll put here work out the interquartile range and what we're going to do is we're going to go from the upper quartile 
and we're going to go forward by 1.5 times the interquartile range. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go to the lower quartile and go backwards by 1.5 times the interquartile range. And this is, I guess, a measure we've come up with to give ourselves these two boundaries, if you like. These two sort of um, uh, limiting extreme points so that beyond those boundaries, we're going to say they are our outliers. So if you're beyond the red lines, you're either too big or too small and you're an outlier. Okay, so the two limits, those two boundaries are at Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range or Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, you might want to pause this and maybe write, write this down. Okay, those limits, those boundaries at which point we start calling things outliers are the upper quartile plus 1.5 times interquartile range or the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the data set we had before. I'll take out some of this mess. And there's one number there that looks like it could be a little bit big, this 25 guy. All right. And we can try this calculation on it. Now we're thinking it's at risk of being too big. So what's the boundary for being too big? The boundary was Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So we just work that out. Q3 is 11 plus 1.5 times 8.5, which was the interquartile range. And we get 23.75. And what that means is anything bigger than 23.75 is too big. We call that an outlier. So 25 is an outlier for this data set. Okay. So that's how we um, do quartiles into quartile range and that's how we identify when numbers are too big or too small and we call them outliers. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.